Hi everyone, it's Jessie. I just want to give a little bit of a trigger warning here. I'm going to talk about some things that are probably going to upset a lot of people. Um, if you're not in a good mental headspace, this is not the episode for you. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Renaissance Era podcast. If you're new here, my name is Jessie, I am your host. Your Renaissance Era is the time between your late 20s to your early 30s where you are rediscovering yourself, you are recreating things, you're connecting back to who you are initially, and you're being a bad bitch while you do it. This is going to be a really weird episode. I am not recording at home. I am not using any of my normal equipment other than my laptop and my AirPods, and we're just going to have to go with that because this is me from the future. Starting next week, you're going to get episodes from me again that were pre-recorded in August and September, but this past weekend was really, really horrible, and it deserves its own episode to explain why I wasn't here the week before, and we're going to talk about it. If you're new here and you are just tuning in and you have no idea who I am, I talk a lot about my Judaism. I try not to hide it because I think it does a disservice for people to not know a Jew. I think it feeds into anti-Semitism. I think it feeds into fear of the unknown, which in a lot of cases leads to Jew hatred. I'm not trying to be self-centered. It's literally the way things are. Um, And this past weekend. So I wasn't, I had an episode ready to go on Thursday and I was ready to press send and something in my gut told me not to. And so I didn't because I spend most weekends interacting with comments, talking to people, etc. I decided not to post and I'm really glad that I did because on Saturday morning, what was supposed to be my weekend off from teaching and a week of relative relaxation for a grad student. Um, Israel was invaded by a terrorist group. And I woke up to my dad running into my room because he thought that I was supposed to go to synagogue that day, basically screaming bloody murder, telling me that Israel was getting bombed and I wasn't going to shul under any circumstance whatsoever. (laughs) Um, Luckily for me, I got to be like, "Uh, yeah, I'm not going because it's my, it's my week off. So I will not be going. Um, But I then spent the next 72 hours glued to my TV, glued to my phone, trying to track down my friends. One of my best friends, her parents are there right now visiting her sister and their eight grandchildren. One of my other friends lives up north with his wife. He's recently married and he is in med school. And then I have some friends who live in the south. And it's scary especially when you hear that kibbutzim are being invaded um, because they're along the border with Gaza. So it was a scary weekend. I spent a lot of time working to try and get one of my friends repatriated to Canada. The Canadian government, in their evident wisdom, has decided as of Tuesday that they're going to send planes and then like transfer some people out, um, acting like it was kind of out of their way to do this. I don't know. I don't like the reaction. It really drove me up the wall. Um, But yeah, I spent my weekend worried about my people. My people being my friends, but also my people being the Jewish people, being scared that there would be attacks at synagogues, that we'd see stuff like Pittsburgh again. I Like, it's terrifying, especially for someone like me who makes the active decision every day to be Jewish and to be openly Jewish and to talk about their Judaism on a bunch of forward-facing platforms. So I'm not going to get into the politics of Israel-Palestine because I, I am not an expert. There are so many other people you could talk to other than me. I do not have the resources to articulate the centuries-long conflicts of the region. I am, however, human, and I am the granddaughter of two people who lived in Germany during World War II. They were not Jewish, but my 
grandmother's father was a socialist and therefore he was on a bunch of SS lists and was put in a work camp on one occasion. So I know what this looks like. My grandparents have trained me to know what a situation like that could look like if it ever happened again. And it felt like that all this weekend. I also, I recognize that there is a difference between Hamas, the terrorist organization, and Palestinian people who do not believe in what Hamas does and are victims equal to Israelis. I do. I am completely on the side of the people who are Palestinian who are not Hamas. I understand their plight and I empathize with it and I am so sorry that they are feeling that way and going through that. On the other hand, I don't know how as a human who knows what's happened throughout history to people in conflicts, but specifically to Jewish people, how you could look at what happened this weekend and not understand that that's terror and not liberation. They cut the heads off of children. There is a video circulating right now on the internet as I record this on October 11th of a Hamas terrorist being interrogated by the IDF, so the Israeli military, where they admit that they want to rape not only women, but children. And if that doesn't tell you that these people are so horribly, horribly mangled in the brain, if it doesn't tell you that these people are not Muslims, and I recognize that these people are not Muslim because the Quran is beautiful and it says nothing about this, then there's something wrong with you. If you can't admit that this is terror and this is war crimes and it's disgusting, then there is something wrong with you. And you need to take a deep, hard look at yourself and evaluate your critical thinking skills. I have unfollowed a bunch of people this week. I have basically told a handful of people to shove it and that I never want to hear from them again um, because they've come to me knowing that I am Jewish and have said, oh, you know, look what your people are doing. Da, 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 da. Like, you're so horrible. You murder children. And I'm sitting there knowing for a fact that I know someone who knows someone whose child's throat was slit. I will not tolerate it anymore. Um, and these are some of these people I have actually stood up for because when I have explained to them my beliefs surrounding Palestinians and Israelis and that Palestinians should have a place that they can call home, that they feel safe because Jews and Palestinians are two of the groups that no one's ever wanted and that I recognize there's a difference between the average Palestinian and Hamas and that most people do not believe what Hamas believes. They've agreed with me and said they agree exactly the same way, yet I open Instagram this weekend and they're cheering the death of my people. This is how the Holocaust started. And it's so violently uncomfortable. And it's horrible and you don't want to talk about it and I'm tearing up thinking about it. But it's disgusting. And this is how it starts. And I never thought I'd see something like this in my lifetime The idea that it could happen again is part of the reason why I don't know if I want kids, which is a conversation that will come up in an episode in a few weeks from now. I know people who have been murdered. I know people who their best friend, their mom, their cousin, their grandmother, their aunt have been murdered. I have a friend who has a friend who got dragged into Gaza and is likely being tortured. And it, it, honestly, it's to the point where if it was me, I would rather that my loved one was dead. I would actually rather that they were dead than in there right now being tortured and sexually abused. Because I don't know how you come out of that if you are lucky enough to be rescued and you don't. I, I don't know how you live. I have no idea how you live after that. So it was a really rough weekend. <laughs> um, I'm happy I did not publish anything last week. I am very happy about that. I would invite you to take a look at what's going on in the world and speak up for your Jewish friends and talk to your Jewish friends and ask them if they're okay. We're obviously not, but we make a mental note every time something like this happens of who reaches out to us and who does not. 
every single Jew has a running list in their head of who would shelter them and hide them if something were to happen and who would not. And every single time something like this happens and someone who is secular, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, whatever, doesn't reach out, we take you off the list. Your silence is you being complicit. So I will leave you with that thought because quite honestly, I have nothing left to say. I have spent four or five days crying comforting my friends who have had to bury people, comforting my friends here in Calgary who are ex-IDF soldiers, who are having PTSD meltdowns. I have been sending money to different organizations in the hope that they can rebuild some of these keyboards and so that they can go and take some ref- like humanitarian aid into Gaza because I understand that it's a two-way street and I'm tired. This week, I have nothing left to give. So I will see you bright and early next Thursday morning.